So last week, we heard the parable of the Good Samaritan. So as the lawyer asked, who is my neighbor? And Jesus responded with the parable of the Good Samaritan. And the lawyer admitted that, yes, it's the Samaritan, the <laughs> person who we don't really think very well of, who became neighbor. Jesus' response was, go and do likewise, to care for those who needed caring for and to continue to be um, God's people in the world. So to me, it's really interesting that the next story that is told by Luke in the scripture is this one. And so this directly comes after the Good Samaritan and the words, go and do likewise. It says, now Jesus and the disciples went on their way and he entered a certain village where a wooden woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do not you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need only for one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. I like the story. Mary gets the good end of the stick. <laughs> but it's interesting to me to just juxtapose this, not only with the Old Testament scripture about hospitality, but also Jesus' instructions to go and care for those who need caring for. So I think one of the things that's clear to me is that this isn't about, about Martha offering hospitality. This is about Martha being worried and distracted. So let's kind of work with that uh, image and continue to think about where God calls us to be. Here's the story. So the story is back in 17, late 1700s. And, um, you know, everything is different than we have now. But uh, one of the things that was true was there were still people who traveled and they still needed to find an inn for the evening. And so there was a farmer who was traveling and he stopped at an inn. It happened to be near where, uh, you know, Northern Virginia, D.C. is now. And he stopped and he said, uh, have you got a room for the night? I probably was a pretty good sized town even for that. And the guy was like, no. <laughs> you know, probably in the innkeeper's mind, he's going, I don't even know if you could pay for it. You look like a farmer. You know, he said, really, we, we you know, no, you're a farmer. Ah. So the farmer left and he went to the next place and he did find uh, a place to stay. And of course, as gossip is to do, it traveled. And the news that traveled back to the first innkeeper, because the farmer had said, you know, I couldn't get a room down at Motel 6 or whatever it was, but have y'all got a room? And the guy said, yeah, come and stay. And once he signed his name, everybody kind of freaked out because somebody went back to the first innkeeper and said, do you know he turned away? No. It was Thomas Jefferson, Vice President of the United States, who, yes, he is a farmer, and yes, he looks like that a lot, but that's who turned away. And so I think part of what is going on with Martha and Mary is that Martha is trying to impress someone she thinks ought to be impressed. That her in her head, here is Jesus, who is this itinerant preacher, and so let me see how much I can put on a show so that he can be impressed with me. Because she, of course, offers hospitality because that's what you do. But you can offer hospitality in a lot of different ways. I know back in my crazy days, and I had a lot of them, I was so concerned about keeping everything up in my house that I would welcome people in. And then like once they ate off the dish, I would go and wash it rather than just sitting and relaxing and 
taking that time with them and just let whatever pile in the kitchen had to pile in the kitchen. This was Martha. She, again, the words out of Jesus' mouth is that you are worried and distracted by many things. You are not paying attention. You are off on a rabbit hole trying to figure out probably how to impress him, trying, trying to figure out who to tell and who to let know and all of this kind of thing. And this is, I always wonder about the stories that, um, and I, I go through a lot of them, but this is the one you're going to get today. So, in our first appointment up in upstate New York, we became part of a cooperative parish, which meant that there were four or five churches that were doing things together, like a vacation Bible school, or like a special mission event, or something like that. And we had a new bishop, actually Bishop Felton May, who was, had come to the conference. And Bishop May was um, committed to visiting in as many churches as he could. So he came to my husband's church. Of course, uh, he was going to get to Fly Creek, New York, three miles north of Cooperstown, New York. Not a lot there for his 11 o'clock worship service. And being a good Southern woman, I said, well, you know, is he going to have lunch? You know, should we give him some lunch? Because, again, Italians have got to feed people anyway. So I've got a double going on. I'm from the South, but I'm Sicilian. So, you know, can we give him some lunch? And so he gets back on the phone. He goes, well, do you want to stay to lunch? And the response is, well, who's coming? And I said, him and his wife? I don't know. So, so I've invited the bishop because I want him to be able to feed before he gets on the road back to, where would he have gone back to? Probably back down to Binghamton, New York, which is like three hours. Sure enough, everybody finds out. And all the pastors from the uh, cooperative parish want to come. And of course, then they want to bring their spouses. And then of course, the Mr. Superintendent wants to come. And he wants to bring his wife. And so now I've got like a dozen people for lunch. And I'm serving a full-time appointment over the phone. <laughs> so everybody comes back. What I served them was the chicken pot pie they had had for a fundraiser the night before. <laughs> got some of that, stirred it up quick. <laughs> Put it out on the table and called it lunch. Here's the funny story I didn't often tell. Is that Bishop Felton May is sitting there eating his lunch. And we just had conversations about lunches, and it was probably close to Easter, and he says, you know, um, I always think that Easter should be made a bigger deal of, just like Christmas and Thanksgiving are, because of course it's the center holiday. And so I've told my wife, I think we ought to have a bigger celebration meal. Make it special. My response well, maybe if you made it, it would be special. <laughs> Didn't say another word to me. <laughs> but his wife really liked it. <laughs> it's all of that. It's all of that. How do we be hospitable and how do we not worry about who we're entertaining? Just simply be God's people for God's people. To continue to not be worried and distracted. To not be, oh my God, what are they going to think? How is somebody going to take this? And again, this is me. Full stop. If I'm okay with God, then everything else is golden. Because people are going to think what they're going to think. And generally, their opinions are more about who they are than you are. And God has said, Jesus has said, don't get worried and distracted about that. Mary was just simply soaking up Jesus' presence trying to, again, have that sense of God in the midst of that moment with Jesus, to be strengthened by it, to focus on him. So here we have two women. One is completely focused on Jesus and who he is, and one is probably completely focused on her own agenda. Now, again, not that we are not, you know, this isn't to uh, do guilt. Never, ever, ever is a sermon to do guilt. It is to do, we can have freedom. We can have freedom to be God's people in any situation. Not worrying about who we're impressing or who's in the room or who's going to like us. Because again, it is what it is. And what Paul writes.
writes at the end of Romans is, if you are doing what you are meant to do as God's people, and there's no law against it, nobody's going to find, well, somebody will find fault with it, because somebody will always find fault with anything. That, <laughs> you never in this life can make everyone happy. That's all there is to it. But you can live a life that is pleasing to God. And that, to me, is the point of our lives. That we would live a life of hope and love and grace and peace and share that. Now, do I think if somebody comes to your house, you ought to offer them water and maybe something needed to get? Sure. And then you ought to sit down <laughs> and relax. Also, don't tell them how your house doesn't look good enough. Your house is your house. People will go, oh, well, I don't know if you could come in on my house. I said, I'm coming to visit you, not your house. And whatever it is, it is. And I don't care. I don't have to clean it. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. Nor is there any judgment about that. There is only trying to please God. And truly, it is a, I want to see that person. And why would anybody try to impress me in any way? I don't know. But it went, you know, the bishop came to the house, the bishop came to the house, you know, whatever. I'm not really too concerned about that. Even less concerned now that I'm a full member. <laughs> the hospitality of our hearts and our minds should always be there. We should always be welcoming of everyone, and that's part of what the text says. Welcoming so that we are relaxed and we can see them because we don't have a thousand things going on in our head. That we're not distracted, we're not working. That to me is what it says. That I can be present with the person who is there. Love the person who is there. Share God's presence with the person who is there. And if I'm in my head, worrying about 10,000 things, even about what they think or the next thing I have to do, or what else is happening in my life, that doesn't help me to be there with them. So hear the scripture. Hear Jesus' words. First it says, go and do likewise to care for others. And then it says, Mary has chosen the better portion. To be present in this moment, knowing what is important. And not being worried or distracted about anything. Good news, I think. Praise God. Amen.